In other news, it appears that Marsh Haven is on the up as those good eggs over at Mondo Corps have done it again by announcing an Hello. 150 new jobs once they open the doors to the Phoenix Plaza. Various boutiques and offices, the plaza boasts a new exhibition space, yeah. famous Pete Mummy, and a much needed cash injection into local secondary school, Anna Kingsford College. Hello. Look, if you can hear this, then maybe all is not lost. Marsh Haven is not the place that you think it is. It has secrets, and there doesn't seem to be a sane adult in a hundred miles of the place who wants to know. Look, just spread the word. The kids are doing the best they can, but the country needs to know. The world needs to know that... Brits on Bikes is an actual play podcast powered by the Kids on Bikes RPG. Listen on your preferred podcatcher... And follow us on Twitter at Brits underscore bikes. Keep on biking. Welcome one and all to Merely Role Players, where theatrical people play role playing games. Uh, I'm Matt, I'm your host, and I am here with four. Well, they were castaways, three of them are no longer castaways, and one of them, who knows? <laughs> uh, Strat, Josh, Starkey, Nat. Hello. Thank you so much for playing. Thank you for Pleasure, having man. me. Yeah. It was amazing. It yeah. was mile a minute stuff, just didn't know what was going to happen. It was mental. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unbelievable. Colon blown. Hundred <laughs> percent. Who's got a question? That's was it. Was that's it as you expected? I just need to know. Was this weird, wonderful adventure as you expected? It was pretty much the balance I was expecting. Actually, yeah, of like survival and hunting and resource gathering stuff to mystery stuff mm. to reacting to people being injured, sort of stuff. Yeah, it actually worked out pretty much as I'd hoped and designed it to. And we sort of moved as much as you thought we would, and I'm aware that we sort of set up base and then were sort of going off on little journeys, but it's not like we just went from one end of the other to the other, you know. That was that great, what expected? No, that was, that was great. And then everything that we known and made and harvested and fished for was just left at home. <laughs> well, the lava was like going in one direction. Right? That's very yeah. true. That's it true. went down the ravine, yeah. right? It went down this way. Yeah. The, lava flats. the way the mountain well, true. ended, true. everything else, it seemed to flow out of the yeah. volcano in one direction. So your, yeah. your wonderful yeah. structure you built will still be there. Yeah. The food would have long run. And the mask that we drew on the... Yeah, on the side. On the little, side. And the little figurines that I drew. Yeah. 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 My tap shoes are still there, presumably. Yeah. 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 This is an interesting discussion because... Because as we record this, I haven't yet decided exactly how to run or like what situation to give the other shipwrecked group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but as you're listening to this, you'll have heard what we did so, <laughs> by this point. Yeah, absolutely. So, probably, possibly, depending on what order we do things. <laughs> wibbly wobbly timey wimey. So yeah, my mind is going a mile a minute with what do I do with the other group. Oh yeah, <laughs> or better. Uh, they've got y- your... Those of you that got off the island present a mystery that they can be going to solve, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, interesting. It's nice to know as well that, uh, I'm making the assumption it'll be on the same island, but if, if it were, that we've sort of mapped out a bit of it already and thrown, you know, a few locations and a few hooks and a few plot lines in there. So it's a good way of world building, actually, just to get everybody else to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I like it. One of, the, um, one of the options I had was to have danger or a mystery. Mm-hmm. What mystery would I have got? Yes. Uh, oh, I've actually got a list of mysteries. So in those five mystery categories, mm. yeah, I've got options for all of you. Wow. Personalised. Yeah. Well, some of them are everyone, um, yeah. and some of them are more personalised. So for instance, uh, some of you, if you asked for a vision, might have looked up and thought that you may have seen a sky vessel dipping mm-hmm. out through the clouds. Yeah. <laughs> Strat, if you'd asked for an artifact, what do you think I would have given you? 
Oh, you're going to give me some bovril. We're giving you a jar of bovril. Yeah. 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 Uh, I had stuff down like uh, uh, two halves of a carved wooden crucifix that's been snapped in half. Oh, from... Yeah, that's another Wild West one, that's right? That Wild was West the one. Dolores, was it? And... Uh, yeah, I can't remember her name now. Um, I was struggling because, Josh, you've only been in one series before, yeah. so I was thinking of things from the series that you've been in. Uh, like, if you'd asked for a structure, you might have got a whole uh, articulated lorry. Yeah. Um, yes. Maybe full of picture full of frames. Free port stolen <laughs> picture frames. Or or possibly the blood transfusion setup. I was thinking blood, yeah, mm. I was thinking Gideon's blood. Like yeah. That. I had an idea that you might find Brighton Pier. <laughs> no. Oh right, okay. Well we said that earlier. Did it the thing is a joke. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was another no. based off of what we said. It, yeah. I, Oh, I I'd forgot. I made a joke about pointing along and seeing yeah. Brighton Pit. Oh, yeah. I when didn't say that. When we first yeah. got shipwrecked, yeah. 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 Written down. Wow. Yeah. wow. So if you'd been along the coast looking for a mystery, or maybe even like up against the volcano looking for a mystery, you might mm. find Brighton, Brighton Pier there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, all sorts. The, the, like I thought the stage from the Ferris Theatre oh, nice. might have been a fun thing to have yeah. because it's almost like it's carved from the rock. It's mm-hmm. mm. cool. But yeah, I'm not going to completely show my hand about like course, uh, my thoughts about what all of it means. But mm, yeah. yeah, obviously you, you spotted the theme reasonably quickly. Yeah, <laughs> no, what like, the mysteries are. I liked it. Well, I mean, it was a mystery for me because I didn't. Because although I have listened to the Wild West one, it was so long ago now mm, that yeah, I kind of forgot. So when yeah. we found the skull, I was like, oh, interesting. Oh, plot hook. And it wasn't until Strat started covering his face and howling to himself that I realised it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was good. That was very, that was, yeah, that, that was a bit of a mind bender. Yeah. <laughs> were you surprised by anything, Matt? There were, a, I mean, I think I was surprised by how fast some of the problems escalated, mm, right. especially on that cliff. Was it the cliff? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's just like lots of failed dice rolls in mm. a row. So it, mm. it's less like being surprised by something you did or yeah. mm. just being like, oh, wow, that's a lot of. That's a lot of misses in a row. Mm. When you were designing the game, there seems to be a lot more opportunity for peril. Even yes. in when you find stuff, every time we found stuff, it seemed like there would always be a danger. There's, there's mm. always danger in the way. It's just whether you are able to see and assess it or mm. whether it yeah. just jumps on you mm. the minute you arrive in the new yeah. terrain. Yeah, I guess that's the nature of the genre, isn't it? We can't be expected to just find things. You can't offer us treasures without also giving us yeah, some yeah. form yeah. of peril in the way. Yeah, and it gives you stuff to do. It's not just mm. like, oh yeah, you find mm. water and yeah. then you bring it back to camp yeah it's like you've got to you've got to have something that you have to overcome to get the water yeah mm. yeah absolutely i mean i think overall there were some awful awful rolls <laughs> there oh, yeah. a few snake eyes <laughs> yeah but on the whole i felt that it wasn't too bad is that sort of an average merely uh, role player session or i mean nobody's ever actually died before I mean, it's ambiguous whether Strap died or not, <laughs> mm-hmm. but <laughs> somewhere. Well, that was yeah. definitely a choice. It yeah. wasn't a, yes. I rolled the dice and there was nothing yeah. Yeah. else I could do but yeah. die. It wasn't um, a failed you know, death save for <laughs> D&D terminology. Yeah, absolutely. It was nice to have, have that choice. Yeah. I definitely think it's probably, the, it, I, I'm almost sure it's the most harm that a, a group of four people has mm. collectively taken. Yeah, I agree with that. Because Natalie, you're the only person that didn't suffer. Uh, didn't go to zero. I didn't go to zero, but no. I had two uh, two bad rolls. Yeah, mm. yeah. I only I only missed twice, which is mad because I felt very very perilous <laughs> uh, yeah, when I was incapacitated. Not to be in peril. It's just the nature of the recklessness. But again, I only failed on my rolls twice, so it was only because it was one after the other and it was at the edge of a bloody fi- a cliff face that yeah. resulted as it did so. well, you danced through the geezers unharmed yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely I dived off a cliff swam jumped off a cliff yeah <laughs> Did I failed five times I mean your encounter with the bees mate oh, that was yeah. just and it, all, all in search of honey it was wonderful it was <laughs> such a Winnie the Pooh moment just an yeah. idiot <laughs> <laughs> just such an idiot mm. <laughs> these things always happen to me in this stupid game <laughs> <laughs> Regarding regarding us, <laughs> yeah. did we sort of behave in the way you expected us to? Did we bring characters through that you expected us to? I mean, um, Old Man Starkey obviously <laughs> made made, a, made an appearance. I didn't really have expectations along those lines. I don't think. Uh, no, I hadn't really thought. I, I was thinking much more about what can I do as consequences for things or as responses to things, rather than trying to second guess. 
like how any of you four would put a character together mm. or or what sort of actions that you might take and whether you'd be reckless or cautious or what. Um, no, I, I I try not to second guess that stuff. I just sort of sit back and let you tell me that part of the story. You've known most of us long enough to yeah. know that you can't second guess the sorts of yeah. things that <laughs> yeah. merely people will do. Yep, yeah. I, I know that I can always count on all of you to keep doing things, which is the important thing. Like that's mm-hmm. as long as you're, you keep doing things, Absolutely. the game keeps working, and I'm happy. That's great, hundred percent. Was there anything you wish that we had done? Or sort of a place that we'd gone to or something that you could have run that you didn't get a chance to? Uh, I had an idea for if you fulfilled that plan you had of going back to the flooded caves yeah. to avoid the lava. Mm-hmm. I had an idea for stuff you might find in there. Um, but I'm going to keep Sturm on that in case the other group finds yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, What would have happened if we got the radio working as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Who, who would we have contacted? Would it have been the real world or would it have been... Another part Errol. Of the I mean, my, Errol, my yeah. thinking was that that was how I would get Errol into this season. Right, yeah. Mm. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, not, not just a, a goat that turns up, yeah. it's just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Has the word Errol written in chalk and poured around its neck. <laughs> it's it's going to be quite fun, actually, because obviously we've done this one and I'm personally invested in this one, so when I listen to this season or this part of the season again, I'll, I'll be intrigued. But then listening to the other side, yeah. I'm sure there'll be little Easter eggs and other little things that crop up and mm. it'll make us have a personal investment in somebody else's story. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. It's going to be fascinating. Mm. Yeah. I think. With, with uh, a, a bit of a salvage question, with the <laughs> bit at the end where I end up in a white bit on a boat, Yes. Did was that something you've just... Did you have to decide that as it happened, or are we reaching some sort of? Are, are you starting to bring threads together, and this was something that was kind of planned? Yeah, Without, I don't, maybe I, yeah. first phase four. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to ask too many questions about this because I I want to be surprised by it. But was that something you were like? Oh, someone did decide to sacrifice themselves. What am I going to do now? Or was this? If they do that, then both. Um, I that scene uh, I did on the fly. Sure. Um, I was like, I wanted you to have a conclusion. Oh, thank you. Um, and I realised that I, obviously you, ha- I'd given you the radio, but you hadn't used it, so we hadn't had Errol yet. Mm. And I like to keep him in. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, yes, uh, I am barreling towards stuff coming together. And if you've been listening to the dropped stitches episodes, mm. there are even stronger hints in there of where stuff might be going or things that might start coming in. But yeah, we are, I think I've I've talked about this in the episode intros before that uh, when I launched the podcast, I had an idea of the concept of us all doing, you know, playing versions of ourselves in lots of different genres. And I had an idea of kind of an end game for that. And my plan for the last year or so has been, we get to that kind of end game season and then we can have a discussion about evolving what the podcast turns into. Mm. So I know that there's there's appetite for change, and I can tell from all of you. Uh, people have told me explicitly, and also I can just tell from character creation and the way you all role play that there is an appetite for not playing versions of yourselves anymore, but mm. for creating char- proper characters uh, as you normally do in a role playing game. It's been a good thing to do to bring some people into the group who might not otherwise have wanted to play a role-playing yeah. game. Yeah, 100%. And, yeah. and it, I feel like it lowers the barrier to entry a little bit because you don't. You have to learn some rules still, but you don't, on top of that, then have to go, what would this character I've made up do? You can just say, what would I do? Sure. Mm-hmm. So it seems like a good way to get things started, but I want to move towards something where potentially we're, we're playing characters instead of versions of ourselves and also something where maybe, rather than doing the short self-contained seasons maybe we do something that's a bit longer term and mm. we can get to know characters and build a story over a longer period mm. so yeah we're heading towards potentially some stuff being pulled together and then maybe a big change mm. it's I don't know about you guys but I find it actually much harder to play myself as mm. I, I don't mm. think in a million role plays I've ever played myself <laughs> like I've always played I guess I the closest one was the Five first Stage one Rescue was the first was the, the closest yeah <laughs> but that was such a heightened weird version of myself <laughs> but since then, I, I find it so difficult to to play myself in these situations. I need to be a different character. Yeah. Well, mm. I know there are definite parts of my personality in the characters that I play. But, oh yeah, we we know. Don't worry. But there's a. <laughs> but it's not like I wouldn't say that I'm playing myself. No. Which I think for some people would be a real big, as you say, like mm. a complete 
remove that barrier to entry, you just have to think about what you would do in the situation. But yeah. when it comes to like a role playing game, I want to play a role. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think it's kind of like a hyper realized version of yourself that's appropriate for the, um, for, 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 for the season because it's so high concept. I can't imagine mm. what, 21st century Josh would be like in the West End yeah in the, in the, in the Wild West sorry not the West End um, <laughs> I can't imagine what I'd be like in you know Sky Pirate scenario so I think it's just heightening yeah. the, the version or of yourself if you were a robot yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. so I'd like to think that it is it is kind of like playing a fantasy game you're just playing a hyper-realised version of yeah. yourself mm-hmm. exaggerate a caricature isn't it yeah absolutely yeah. Well, it's, it's like a lot of kind of different art forms. You play a version of yourself. Comedians do it a lot. Yeah. They're presenting mm-hmm. themselves, but for a lot of them, it's still a character, even if it's mm-hmm. if it's still them. It's yeah. quite a common theatrical kind of trope that maybe you just don't think about so much mm-hmm. when you think about performance. It's always yeah. about being someone else, yeah. but being yourself on stage. Even like the, the character, yeah, the, the the character of uh, of like um, a magician or a mentalist or someone. Like that, if you think of people like Darren Brown, I'm sure his onstage persona is oh, yeah. a mm. heightened version of his office. But yeah. also, uh, uh, maybe because he was the first person that brought to mind, but all those different sorts of performances yeah. where it is reliant on you performing as mm-hmm. yourself is, is kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. And you would never really think of it in a role playing game <laughs> yeah. situation, but it, I think it, yeah, it, it seems to really work. That's a lot of fun. Mm. Mm. Is there anything any of you were hoping to get out of this or do in this session that you didn't get to do? Or anything that you did that you were really pleased with? I think out of all the ones I've done, this has been the one I've had absolutely no expectations for. Like, I just think, I just didn't know what... I knew the basic premise of we're going to be stuck on an island. So then you can you can think, right, so there's going to be the, the base, we've got to find food, water, shelter. But other than that, I had no idea. You know, like I had absolutely yeah. no idea where it was going to go. Whether it's going to be four hours of us just fishing, <laughs> or, you know, searching for berries, you know. hiding in a cave. And it could have been that, I suppose. Yeah, it could, yeah. You could absolutely use exactly the same rules that we use and tell a story that is more like that, that's almost pastoral. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, yeah. you'll still run into trouble while trying to find the fish uh, yeah, or yeah. berries mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you could focus on that if you wanted to. We would literally be spending five hours just like herding cattle, yeah. mucking out the stables. We make a brand new civilization. Yeah, exactly. It's just a game role playing version of Animal Crossing. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Farm, Farmville. I think that's the, the thing with having the mysteries there as an option. It's too tempting a carrot to not take a bite of, though. Yeah, yeah. every time one happens, it's like you've got to just go on for it, pull at it. Yeah, a little bit. Absolutely. Which is interesting because when I first was planning this out and and thinking let's do a shipwrecked on an island story that hadn't even occurred to me as a thing to build in i mm. thought it was all going to be about like trying to avoid getting mauled by wolves and sure. finding water and that kind of stuff and then i think when i pitched it on the uh, merely role players whatsapp group i think the immediate response was oh like lost mm. <laughs> and so i was like oh maybe i should put some stuff for you know some slightly weird mystery stuff yeah. in there as well and then with just where this season fell, I started to see opportunities to then use that mm-hmm. for other stuff that's planned. I think as well because this this um, season just uh, there's no or very little role playing that you have to do. There are very few NPCs. Yeah. So you've got to mm-hmm. not use the time up, but you've got to sort of keep us entertained and occupied and give us give us barriers and hurdles to over overcome. And how did you that find that, man? The fact that we weren't playing many parts in this one. Uh, uh, fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was happy with that. Um, it, it, I def, I think I had to make more decisions this time than I would have done if it was a more social interaction sure. sort of heavy story. Uh, I definitely had to come up with a, a lot of fail consequences. <laughs> <this time. laughs> yep. um, but you all make that reasonably easy. I feel like you all have an appetite for drama enough that if I can't think of something, you'll suggest something and um, embrace that problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we all got ourselves into quite a lot of trouble. Mm. (laughs) I I think it's kind of in these situations, it's go hard or go home. It's whatever works best for the story. I'd rather fall off a cliff than stub my toe and injure myself Mm -hmm. that way. You know, it's more... It's a split space of time as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. We've got four, five, maybe six hours if we've got a long one. Mm. Yeah. But... Succeeding at hunting and fishing is nice, just in case we we go down that other path. But you don't want to do that for the whole right. time. Right, mm-hmm. absolutely. 
the thing I didn't know what I would do if it happened was if you all died. <laughs> God, which was like possible. You, yeah, <laughs> like if you all failed running away from the lava or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how... I would have made that a satisfying conclusion. I might have been leaning more heavily on the other group to pick up threads. Sure. But also, I, as well, even though I know I've got another session coming, I still want this one to be satisfying for you four, as well as for the listeners and for me. So, mm. yeah, I'm not sure how, how I would have handled that. Uh, keep, giving you, uh, keep giving you last chances. Yeah. Until, yeah, until, until you can one only stick. give so many, mm. I suppose, until it feels like you're just... <laughs> Yeah, I think as a player, if you're in a, a terrible situation, you it's nice to be given outs, but if you fail enough, at some point you kind of yeah. go, we've just got to die. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. where the story is. I don't want to be spoon-fed, you know, yeah. an easy easy way out. I'd rather die. But it's, it's interesting. <laughs> death, death by a thousand bees. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's interesting that, un, that we didn't put ourselves in any situations where, like, instant death mm. came up, even jumping off the edge of a cliff, as some of us did. Um, yeah. So it, it meant that... I, I guess because we're only playing for a few hours, we're not in reality going to get um, run out of morale four times and therefore insta, insta die. So unless we've done something really stupid, mm. then I guess... Also, it felt like you could fail and be in danger and be hurt, and that was okay. It yeah. felt, in some situations, it feels dangerous to fail. And although it was dangerous to fail, there seemed to be enough opportunities to try and get out mm. of it. Mm-hmm. Even if you just dug yourself deeper in. Yeah. It, it, you, there was always seemed to be a way out, but you kind of felt that eventually you're going to dig too deep. And the the thing I wanted out of that uh, system where you have the sort of the the consequences of being demoralised was to make sure that if somebody is taken out, that that then creates more opportunities for action rather than halting it. Mm-hmm. So if somebody is exhausted then they need lots of food. So then you have to go out and find food mm. and that is a thing you have to do and you have to face danger on the way. Mm. So it's a way of just keeping things rolling. Mm. Yeah, it's clever. I like the the idea of if you had one of those four things that you couldn't roll or do anything mm. and yeah. you found yourself becoming... It was this sudden You're feeling of helplessness and yeah, yeah being yeah. A, a burden. Yeah. Mm. And that was one of the big things that made me decide, you know what, I'm going to do whatever this weird mystery thing is and because i was like i i am there's two of us out right now there's uh, he can shove me full of honey but that seemed like weird it didn't seem to <laughs> really be the same as going and getting a nice meal and having time to rest up and we needed to quickly get out of there and so many failures were going on and you're like this uh, at this moment is suddenly a life or death like you you could help the only way i could be helpful there was to not be there Mm. and to like say this is one less thing you have to deal with get out of it and i don't think you would have that feeling as a player in a lot of other games where there is harm and peril there's always a way of like oh it's all right you can give me a health potion or you can do whatever it is like there's a person with bandages over there but that felt so like there was some permanence there that it it made it far more likely I think that people are going to go no go save yourselves because this actually makes sense and is the most helpful I can be right now I don't think I've played a, an RPG where that that has happened yeah. it hasn't always felt like that that sort of thing that you should do because everything else is quick get out of it where yeah you know, absolutely it's interesting that was a new experience so mm. thank you yeah. yeah thank you Matt it's great well, thank all of Loved you mm. oh round of applause Until next time. Till next time. Mm. And I am here with uh, an exhausted but relieved, changed crew of the Viola expedition. (laughs) Good lord. Uh, How's everybody feeling after that? Shattered. Yeah. yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah, I feel very tired though, which is normal. But actually, it was even more exciting than a regular than mm. other series I've done have been. I think as a player, I feel like it had every part of what I wanted from a castaway <laughs> thing, and then like two hundred times more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we f- we spent the first third doing castaway stuff. Yeah. The middle third doing mystery stuff, and the last third doing like what the <laughs> what. <laughs>
it was it was something else. It really was. Yeah, yeah that was. I had no idea what this was going to really throw up. Um, and it, yeah, an awful lot happened. It definitely had a hell of a lot more payoff than Lost, <laughs> although that is a low bar to hurdle. Yeah. <laughs> when I was thinking about similar media mm-hmm. stuff about mm-hmm. like exploring wildernesses, being cast away, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, I was thinking about Lost. Yeah, of course. About things like Cast Away, Robinson Crusoe, all that kind of stuff. And then I started thinking about Annihilation. I know. I yeah. felt the Annihilation <laughs> vibe yes. so hard, and I loved it. Yes, Which it was really good. I, I didn't have in mind for the previous group, but then I was like, when I made the decision that you four were going to be following in their mm, footsteps, yeah. that that is an I suddenly made yeah, the annihilation yeah. connection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and it was such a dramatic like process of us all realizing yeah. what the hell was going yeah. on. That was great. Yeah. yeah. What What did you all like? hope that you were going to get to do did you get to do it was there anything that you that you wish you'd managed to get out of this that you didn't genuinely no Mm. genuinely no i had i had no yeah i had no idea what we were going to do past like the the obvious things like survive and all that sort of stuff but yeah it's just a a fascinating um experiment and i've kind of a bit genuinely a little bit speechless (laughs) stuttering through sentences experiment is definitely what it was yeah it's worked i I really wanted some like personal peril because i've enjoyed that when we've done i've done that in other um series it's something that like i find Mm -hmm. particularly rewarding as a player and so i've got i got several instances of that which was great (laughs) epic eel battle yeah i mean what who saw that coming? that really did become it yeah yeah. two of you yeah. versus the eel yeah where it was just like every role really did like throw a spanner in the works and you're having to like figure out a way around that and I think um, at the start of the day before we started anything it would have been like oh we you know survive is the yeah. idea yeah. but then even after doing the first like chat about what's happening it suddenly became about the mystery and about strats yeah. and about what was mm-hmm. going on yeah. and, stuff, and that completely changed how the whole day really ran yeah yeah, it did, yeah. It was good to have that time as well to think about, like, what would have motivated us to mm-hmm. go in the first place. And then, obviously, planning mm. planning an expedition, but then that getting swept out from underneath us so that we have mm. to cope in those first moments before we're able to get into, like, mm-hmm. dealing with the story was, I thought, worked really well. Yeah, it's yeah. quite funny to end the day flying a spaceship and start the day trying to poke a pig with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Shouting pig, Come pig, pig, pig. Long way baby I'm hoping you didn't feel too hoodwinked that like I let you plan your expedition and like put in lots of details about how prepared you were and then be like no you get one thing yeah oh no it was great that's exactly what I was expecting though because that is how like if you were setting up any kind of story like that that's exactly what would happen Mm -hmm. right like all great rescue movies even if they're not about being a castaway have there's a great expedition planned and within the first five minutes you lose everything yeah all hell's broken I knew that when I was building my backpacks together (laughs) Like, more people die in the rescue attempt than would have been lost with the first group of... I mean, that's what happens in Annihilation. It's what happens in a load of other movies. Yeah, Yeah. and I mean, Alex, you mentioned when we were doing setup for for this uh, many, many episodes ago, uh, the first of the current generation of Tomb Raider games. I had that one in mind as well, and Mm -hmm. that's exactly what happens. They have a very well-planned expedition. Yeah, everything goes to to hell, yeah. You a little knife, if you're lucky. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. It's always more interesting, right? It's always more interesting to Um, see if you can work it out. I'm annoyed I took a compass. That was about, it came in handy. The plus one for navigating was helpful was, a few times. As soon as I realised that I could have chosen anything, I'd have been like, why didn't you say something like hatchet? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or something, you know, yeah, hatchet, useful. Hatchet, hunting knife, yeah, literally. anything a led to rope. Length of road. I just went yeah. campus. <laughs> when you're a castaway, you need a campus. But I like that it. You were thinking on your feet in that situation, mm. and you would be in that situation. Yes. Yeah. You would be thinking on your feet. You would be like whatever I can grab at. Mm. Yeah. And I kind of like that it kind of simulates. Yeah, that. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I kind of in my head, I thought before we started that at some point I was going to make a friend for us to boost morale like a mm. and I just oh, well, like a man Friday just, that went out of my oh, head no, make so a friend. quickly <laughs> like, not like yeah. make friends but no, no, make a friend make a friend out of twigs yeah. like a, this is our morale boosty Actually, friend that uh, we could pass around a circle if we'd have been less good at boosting our own morale we yeah. might have needed that yeah, yeah. we really might have needed that that was Priorities. the thing that you were all consistently yeah. nailing yes. Yes. Was like, and you get morale and you get morale <laughs> and I really like that that gives us some like nice quiet scenes as yeah. well mm. in terms of like what we've actually got on tape that it means mm. we've got these nice conversations that 
like balance out the high octane yeah. fighting eels and mm-hmm. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fighting eels how- underwater whilst holding your breath. <laughs> How do, you, how, do you, how do you feel it went? Is there anything that you would have liked us to have done that we didn't do? I, no, I'm really pleased with it. Um, I, I had uh, in my head, since I started planning these, and I, and I had the idea of what the mysteries were going to be, the image of the other half of the wren at the bottom of a lake yeah. mm-hmm. so when Dave was like we oh. find a lake I was like oh thank goodness <laughs> yes, David. I get yes. to do my thing <laughs> yes so yeah I mean just that alone I'm very satisfied yeah. Yeah. that had a real Planet of the Apes vibe to yeah. it yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. and also it had always annoyed me from the third space one that like Ellie called herself captain of the other half and I was like hang on where am I what, what's going on with my bit so I'm glad that that's been solved yeah. as well yeah and you got to reinstate yourself as captain <laughs> Did we throw any curveballs at you? There were a few, like, actions that you wanted to take that I didn't have, like, written moves uh-huh. for. In fact, all of all of the, like, manipulating the yeah. mysteries into mm. new shapes, I'd had it... I don't know why this happened, but, like, I had had the idea that you might be able to do that, but I hadn't written rules for it, mm-hmm. so I was yeah. thinking a bit on the fly about that, but I think that worked I think out. it worked yeah. fine. Yeah, I think it worked fine. Yeah, I like the idea of it just... And it was. It felt very similar to like the manipulation of reality that my character had in Parallax did like cost her something, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Like it had a phys- it, p- it took a physical toll. So mm-hmm. it, and the fact that we'd seen then that vision of it costing Strat like everything he had to be able to do something yeah. like that, it totally made sense for it to be like, well, you can do this, but if you're not going to do it successfully, it's the yeah, morale's what it's going to cost. Yeah, you're, mm-hmm. you're you're playing with the fabric of reality yeah. here. Like it's, it's good. It's yeah. got. It's risky. As yeah. I found out. <laughs> oh no! To my you can have fun with that arm, though. I am. I'm. I, am, I definitely am. I'm excited <laughs> to go and take down the government. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. We haven't done a. You know, we. Ha- I'm just saying, Matt. We haven't done a take down the government series. Yeah, so. <laughs> and they must know what's going on with this island for, to stop the, yeah. the other guys telling mm. us about or, it. Or, or do maybe they, they don't, mm. and that's their that's their <laughs> biggest fear. They don't have the answers. Yeah, and they're like, mm. these people are just gonna. It's gonna unsettle people and scare people. Mm. So we're just gonna shut this down. We, ha- we have to keep them and question them until we can find out which is again what happens in Annihilation essentially yeah. isn't it where yeah they're keeping them going we want the truth and they're going I don't know what to tell you yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you everything I know <laughs> on a personal level what do you guys think you're going to tell people happened to me Cause I'm oh like when we go back you. I'm not with you uh, yeah, if there's an awkward... I mean, there's going to be lots of awkward questions about what are you flying? Yes, <laughs> that's going to be the main also, focus. Yeah. But someone, I hope, will be like, um, maybe, maybe Ellen, <laughs> given that it was under the radar, maybe we tell people that you didn't come with us. Oh, I've just disappeared. Yeah. I'll just be like, who? Yeah. Mm. Really? What? No one called Ellen exists. <laughs> <laughs> we just gaslight everyone. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> and then no, you become, we let your mum yeah, know. Okay. We let your mum know. Like at, at some point in like the taking on the government, uh, everybody seems like they're in peril, and then out of the shadows, <laughs> yeah. yeah, dressed in rags. Yeah. 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 For some reason, you've got with a volleyball patch. <laughs> <laughs> and a stick of candy floss. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. You're, you're the you're the ace up the sleeve that nobody yeah. else knows. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you spent so long making Brighton and Peer into different. Things mm-hmm. that you've got like perfect powers of manipulation. Yeah, I think you can that's make it. anything you it. like a superhero. Yeah. It's gonna be Brilliant. amazing. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brighton Pier, like incongruously, there was another uh, image I had in my head. Yeah, I thought it was beautiful. As soon as you said stilts, me and Alex yeah. looked at each other. Like, I, it's going to be Brighton Pier. <laughs> I was like, I have no idea what's happening. Yeah, I was like, it's going to be Brighton Pier. It's going to be Brighton Pier. Oh my God, it's going to be Brighton Pier. I'm really sorry with how I ended up drawing it on the map because it just <laughs> like a lewd <laughs> sketch. That's kind of what piers look like from above, I think. So yeah. it's fine. Great. Check it's out fine. our uh, Instagram and <laughs> yeah. Twitter accounts. Yeah. To see oh, these no. masterpieces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you didn't give us everything that they had on the map. That was actually... Yeah. yeah. I figured it didn't make sense to get... So, uh, for, for those at home, uh, you should be able to see on, like, our Facebook um, the comparison between the, the map that the Prospero group drew and the map that I gave the Viola group. Um, I left off some details, mostly the dangers that they came yeah, across. Yeah, of course. Because I figured... If you're going to push into those areas, you get to make up your own dangers. Mm. Otherwise, it's yeah. later, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, things could have changed anyway. The bees right? have probably moved. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. And I think or it... calmed down, at least. <laughs> Not the bees. <laughs> So they did have a full B related. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. Okay. Looking forward to <laughs> that Brilliant. one. Oh, a joy. Yeah. Have I they think... got the honey, so they must have been yeah. the honey. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine that Chris got stung to all hell. I yeah. don't know why I've got him raiding the, the honey pot. <laughs> yeah, that does seem likely. 
anything about the way the rules worked feel like it worked particularly well or didn't work for you? Because I'm actually thinking of writing these up as like a proper rule set that other people can use. Mm. That's great. I don't think... No. I quite liked being back to the relatively simple yeah. three three things, one, a move when you're in your element. Yeah, I like, like the way the helping works this way, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like it didn't give you a plus to the roll, it actually jumped you up. Yes, there. I think that is better, because yeah. if, actually if someone's on a six, giving them a plus one to the roll is yeah. just not, it's point. Where, what's the point? Because I've been thinking about that, about the difference between like giving you a plus one or plus two versus mm. upping you a whole category. And going up the whole category feels like it's almost too powerful. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's yeah. Too, it's too good a result. Yeah. But then I saw somebody, another game designer who works in these sorts of systems, had actually mathed it out. Yeah. And it works out pretty much the same as a plus two mm. um, in terms of the, mm. the effect and the, like the percentage of successes you end up. Getting. Yeah, because you need to so, get a, you need to get a success yeah. right to get mm-hmm. someone there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it, and there's and a it, cost to you if it goes wrong. Yeah. And it's yeah. easier to do the maths. You don't yeah. have to do as much plusing. Yeah. So I quite yeah. like it. Yeah. I think it works. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I thought that worked really well. It yeah. was interesting kind of trying to do a bit... We ended up doing quite a bit of kind of animal combat yes. in a <laughs> in a game rule that doesn't really allow you to win fights. That's right. yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was quite tough. Yeah. yeah, yeah. well, that made the con get a challenge, yeah, you, right? Yeah, all you could really do was get away from things, yeah. which yeah. is, you know, how you are in your survival, really. So Yeah, I think that's quite that was quite good, actually. That, being, that's a very yeah. conscious design choice, because I didn't... I don't, what I don't want is this to be a game about like you conquering nature yes. and, like mm-hmm. going yeah. like killing all the wildlife yeah. and like oh I kill the bear and I wear its skin yeah. Yeah. like yeah. that's not no. what I want you can do yeah. that in Dungeons and Dragons yeah. Too, yeah. So, yeah. so I wanted yeah. something a bit different where it's a bit more like you have to respect the, na- the yeah. nature yeah. Yeah. you escape with your life well yeah. done yeah. Yes. That, yeah, that's yeah, the best exactly. you can yeah. hope for mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah, I felt like getting out of the situation with the eel alive, relatively unscathed, and then with an artifact from the ship was like that, that was as, yeah, as, that was as best yeah. as uh, that was the best possible result I could have mm-hmm. had. What was in the little box? Don't know. Don't know. I made that little box up, man. <laughs> Did you have yeah. a hope of what might be in it? Um, I was thinking that it was either going to be some kind of like communication device mm. or just like some kind of futuristic medicine. Nice. In terms of the like story idea, do you think if we had found something that the others had found mm-hmm. but was part of a series that none of us had been involved with, would it have been there? No. no. So it wouldn't have been visible? No, I made that choice that you would mm-hmm. only find stuff related mm-hmm. to stuff you've done mm-hmm. on the show. Was there a series that n- any of us weren't involved in? I was trying to think about it while we were doing the show, oh, while we were uh, doing the recording. Oh, between the lot of us? Yeah, no. between the four of us. No, I don't think so. I, don't th- I think we've covered every single one between the I, four of us. Yes, you have. Because I've got lists yeah. here of potential of, mystery problems yeah. for, ah. for all of those categories for all of you. Some of them are kind of more general, like parallel worlds things. Like you see infinite reflections of your parallel lives, or like hazy other worlds, yes. or that kind that of thing. That was some visions. Because the flare was like yeah. from Five yeah. Stage Rescue. It yeah. was, yeah. So I had ideas like oh yeah, share some of your best ones, man. Yeah. Come on. So you could you could have seen you could have glimpsed Tilly. Yeah, classic, <gasps> brilliant. Or the last one. Do you remember that? Gideon's hippo from Let's Get Gideon. Oh, God, yeah, the hippo. <laughs> we, I would never have got that. Yeah. I thought, I thought that, that might be a deep cut. I thought that might be a deep cut. What's his name? Oh, the last <laughs> one. <laughs> We've awesome, that joke. Awesome Sky Dogs. Sky, sky Dogs, dogs classic. Yeah. The uh, b- 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 Sky Vessel was one of my thoughts. Maybe mm-hmm. like dipping through the clouds. Yeah. Uh, Jara Bovril. Nice, <laughs> yeah. Washed up on the shore. Oh, I'd have been yeah. like... Been burning, burning <laughs> fire. Yeah. Good job, Strat didn't see that, and then he yeah. would have killed yeah. himself to make a helicopter. Yeah. Maybe the Ferris Theatre Manager's wheelchair. Yeah, could mm-hmm. be a fun artifact. Yeah, um, <laughs> Lion King ticket. Yeah, <laughs> from that lovely date. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, it was difficult thinking of upstaged stuff, to be honest. <laughs> right but, here but is it, iconic, though. Right perfect. Here, yeah. A and seagull, it, but and then we're on an island. Yeah, mm. but yeah. it helps that you your role in that one, Ellen, was as a, the props person. Because <laughs> yeah. I had ideas about like one of the handbags from the Brighton Pier show that were like from an authentic period and that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Would this have been like if we just found like a little mystery? Yeah, so if you if you'd like picked... a jar of Bovril is much smaller than Brighton mm. Pier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you'd picked an artifact. <laughs> Art of Art of whereas structure is what yeah. we found quite yeah. a lot of mm-hmm. the time. Yeah, so yeah. armoured art lorry is actually a thing that I had on this list. And it was yeah. in the mountain yeah. the whole time. It was in the mountain, time. yeah. <laughs> the burned out saloon that Alex jumped off the top nice. of. Nice. Yeah. 
Um, did you have a fair... crazy golf course? I didn't. I should have. Yeah. Oh, yeah, come oh, on. That's an obvious yeah. one. Yeah. Golf Hit, great. Can you imagine you're on the plane and suddenly you're like, <laughs> wait, hang on a minute. Hang on a second. The Ferris <laughs> Theatre stage is one I had mm-hmm. on the list as well. Yeah, uh, so the I'm idea like... of that carved into the yeah. rocks yeah. is pretty, really that, uh, <laughs> that was a great idea. Really, really here's, smart. Here's an ambitious one that I'm sort of, sort of gutted we didn't get to use, was that Vicky specifically, Yeah. if you dug down... Oh, God into the soil of the island you might have found that under the top soil oh it was all made of like plastic yeah oh (gasps) man oh I wish I'd done some digging and maybe there was a whole evil villain complex underneath oh boy oh I should have done some digging That's annoying. Yeah, I was thinking, well, as soon as you, as soon as like a helicopter, once there was the paddle steamer and then the helicopter, I was like, that has to, like, I bet that's going to be the helicopter from, because it was such a feature in Mosaic as well, because yeah. we did so much weird stuff with it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it, uh, it was, thank you to Nat from the Prospero crew for, I can't remember whether she said this on air or whether she said it to me afterwards, but she gave me the prompt of like, if I was interviewed by authorities all i would say is the helicopter is real the island is real the steamer is real yeah so that was a great oh, detail well for her. Yeah. she gave me that to feed you oh she's a awesome. smart lady yeah. there's definitely a path that we could have followed down of like illusion hypnosis nonsense that we didn't it would have led nowhere so yeah i, mean, I think that's good that. yeah yeah really really helpful but great to have a clue rather yes. than genuine information to follow. That yeah. felt very satisfying. Well done, team. Yeah. Did yeah. you, when you started mm-hmm. role players, did you have an idea that like there would be a big come together? Yes. Yeah. So it's always been kind of a thought as you've gone through. And this is why I've been quite strict about maintaining the thing that to one extent or another in different series, but that you're always some form of theatre company. Yeah, yeah. Because that is kind or of Or connected to it in some important, way. Yeah. Important for the consistency and, and why even as even as people have started really wanting to drift away from it and play like original characters that I've been keeping the you are some version of yourself yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. in this situation because that means that we have the continuity between the different storylines. Yeah. But yeah, I've had some idea. It's actually the the details of it have emerged through play. I, yeah. I, I, that was important to me that that I wasn't just like show running this from the start and saying yeah. this is my vision. Yeah. Yeah, like when the... you started it, you didn't expect Bright and Pierre to be on no. the island. No, 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 like, no. You knew that <laughs> Matt was hasn't happen. planned this out. <laughs> no. And the things that tie it together are actually a lot of it has come out of Vicky and Ellie's drop stitches mm. episodes. So a lot yeah. of it has come from yeah. the two of you. I've sort of given you a framework to work yeah. in. But the specifics of things. I mean, we are kind of did everything. Yeah, almost everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just had this horrible image of you pulling out an envelope and saying, "And here's the map of the island I drew." Yeah. Yeah. That is oh not Aaron Browning. Us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would be cool if he was, but he's not. <laughs> Maybe unless he's actually engineered me and Ellie to do everything in that drop stitch series, which is possible. <laughs> no, I haven't. Okay. I wouldn't do that to all of you because we're doing this together. Yeah. Uh, and thank you so much for, for doing it together and coming back and doing another one of these. Any time. Yeah, happy to do it. It was great fun. Any day. Fantastic. And thank you for doing them for us, Matt. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, uh, Matt. You're thank genius. you, audience, for listening. Yay, morale boost for everyone around the globe. Have a banana. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to Merely Role Players. In this season, Vicky, Dave, Ellen, Alex, Nat, Strat, Starkey, and Josh all play themselves, sort of, in a game designed and run by Matt. Like most of our games, this one's powered by the apocalypse. You can find more games in this genre at apocalypse-world.com slash pbta. If you enjoy the program, let us know with a review or rating on Apple Podcasts Podchaser, Listen Notes, or wherever you do your listening. You can also find us on Twitter at Merely Roleplay and at facebook.com slash Merely Roleplayers. Merely Roleplayers is an independent production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Join us for more drama next episode.
Till next time. Mm. <laughs> Until the next place. <laughs> The next what is time? <laughs> <laughs> to the next universe.